Let's talk to Mark Oswald, uh, Chief Economist and Global Strategist at ADM Investor Services International. Mark, good to see you. Welcome back. How significant is this uh, opening up? I, I think it's significant in a number of aspects. <laughs> it's clearly part of the whole stimulus measures package that we're, uh, we've been being drip-fed over the past few weeks. Um, I think it is also a reaction to the fact that FDI trends in China over the last five years, basically, foreign money coming into China, have not been as good as they were. Um, it's also an opportunity to counter a lot of the criticism from the U.S. and from the EU uh, about not opening up its manufacturing sector at the same time as also basically hoping that additional foreign money coming into uh, the equity market uh, <clears throat> where, where it's been where the, these liberal liberalizations have been applied uh, will also serve to support what is this nascent equity market turnaround. And how does this newly published uh, negative list reflect uh, China's broader plans, perhaps? Um, I, I, th I think it, you know, part of it is, is definitely tactical. Um, I think there's, you know, to a certain extent, it also it's a message to domestic investors. Don't worry so much about dwindling foreign capital. And I think it's also trying to also ensure that there is better domestic demand by increasing competition, as your video, uh, previous video showed. You know, basically, you can improve in efficiency and probably um, um, improve competition overall. And that basically should be a positive for the economy. This is a moment of jeopardy, isn't it? We were just talking about the U.S. election and, of course, uh, EU tariffs perhaps coming up uh, on, uh, on Chinese goods um, that may turn out to be permanent. Who knows? Yes, um, you know, uh, we are in a state of flux in terms of global trade. Uh, I think what this also shows is that by trying to boost domestic demand, any ebbing in export orders both because, uh, above all, the European economy is fairly weak uh, and because of geopolitical tensions, above all, trade tensions. You know, this might serve to mitigate some of that. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a complex moment for everybody to try and deal with. I don't think anyone really has any idea which way the, the balls, which are all up in the air at the moment, are going to land. Well, while the balls are still up in the air, um, give us your thoughts on China's economic growth prospects for uh, 2024. You've touched on Europe's. Yeah, I, I, th I think basically um, all the measures that have been undertaken should basically ensure that that 5% target is basically reached. Um, I think there's a delicate balancing act going on here because to some extent what he doesn't want to do is encourage bubble-like conditions, i.e. hence why the, the fiscal stimulus is both targeted and to a certain extent measured um, because creating another bubble in another sector or recreating one in the property sector is precisely what they don't want to achieve. But with these measures, basically, growth should be underpinned and some restructuring, which is a long-term project, fr away from manufacturing investment towards more private consumption, and there's a lot more scope there, um, it, you know, it could well be achieved by stabilizing the economy as opposed to create, having a backdrop where the, the underlying sentiment is one of a lack of confidence both at the business and the consumer level. Mark, good to see you. Thank you for that. Mark Oswald, Chief Economist and Global Strategist at ADM Investor Services International.